Dari, hello. It is <coughs> the beginning of June 2021, and I'm going to give you tonight an unscripted and hopefully error free uh, tour of Chromix 11.27. Now, as you'll see, this is running on uh, a Zemu emulator, which is in turn running under VMware on my single and only desktop computer. So uh, let's start by looking at what you see on the screen, which is a VMware window. We're running uh, Windows 10, the 32-bit version, and inside that we're going to start the em we're going to start that we're going to resume that uh, VMware session. And inside that session is an emulator running a ZAP emulator. Um, if you search the channel, you'll find other Chromemco videos uh, telling you how to get to this point. Okay, so we're going to press the resume button. Uh, it's quite quick because uh, the desktop workstation is quite quick and this is only a 32-bit emulation and as only as it 32-bit emulation it's only using two, therefore two gigabytes of memory so it's quite lightweight so what do we see in front of us we see the Zemu emulator it's running uh, I've actually got two terminal screens here uh, that's in the middle of a chess game uh, let's see if I can and this is a command line uh, and the purpose of this uh, tutorial is to just show you around Chromix 11.27, which, if you recall, is the latest and greatest and last version of the Z80 version of Chromenco Chromix. Um, so Chromenco started off uh, with the CDOS operating system and then moved to the uh, Unix-like uh, so-called Chromix operating system running on a Z80, Z80. And then they had a series of 68,000 versions of the operating system, which were considerably more powerful, but also considerably more expensive. And the good news is that today, if you follow the instructions uh, on the, uh, the WordPress and also look at the YouTube videos, you can recreate a working Chromix 11.27 system. And today is just the uh, guide to that system. Um, so we've got two terminals here that are actually running. We've actually got a third terminal, which is actually a putty window. So this is not part of the VMware session. This is a putty window. And I think I might need to restart that. Let's just... Let's just... Uh, have I got a session there? Or no, not? I'm going to see if it's that session running. I've, I've, res I've, res I've actually paused the VM and restarted, re resumed it, so I... I think that's not running. Mm. It's a slight aside, it's really got nothing to do with uh, it's got a network session, okay. And where did that window go? Yeah, it's aborted because it's <coughs> it's timed out. Just restart that session. Uh, let's try and bring these windows back to where they were. Okay, what I was trying to show you was that's the third window. So this is a Z80 processor running three logged in user sessions. If I type command who, uh, you'll see that there are three users logged on, TTY1, 2 and 3. Uh, system is logged on, Marcus is logged on, and system is logged on again. This is the third terminal counting from 0, 1, 2. This is the terminal zero, and that's terminal one. Okay, so the em emulator is running. So that was just to, sh to show off this window. I won't show that again. But just to say, this is a three-user system We're running on a Z80 processor with Unix-like facilities. Okay, so let's first of all do a quick tour of the file system. I'll try and show you what's standard, and if it's not standard, I'll try and put that out. So the D command is similar to the Unix CD command, so we'll go to the root level of the directory. And we're doing ls minus l, and we've got the following files. So we've got a bin directory, which is where the binaries are kept. Uh, we've got a CMD directory, which is where shell scripts, you like, if you like, are kept. Uh, there is a rudimentary uh, programming language. It's nowhere near as powerful as say, a, 
a bus shell or a corn shell, but it's it's got if statements and it's got comments and it's got go tos, rudimentary. The actual operating system is chromix.sys and it is this file here. It's only 35 kilobytes in size. Um, Romanco came up with this idea of uh, version control inside their binaries. So if I just type version and then a file name, so version of, uh, of slash chromix.sys, it trundles for the file looking for that signature. And indeed, it's Chromex 11.27. Um, the next thing you'll see are these are these files, uh, D A D B D C D D. Now, in in Chromex, when you mount a device, you actually create a file, and you you mount a device on top of the actual drive. So if I do a mount command, you will see that already mounted are on top of the file name called slash bin is the device FDB, so that's the 8 inch disk drive B, so floppy disk B, and that's mounted on top of slash bin, the file slash bin, and that becomes the directory slash bin, and in the same way floppy disk C is mounted on top of the file called slash DC, and that becomes the directory. So you see that that DC is a directory, whereas DA and DB are files. So if, just to prove that point, oh, I can't prove that point because this chess program is running from inside DC. So I could possibly show that a bit later, but it's unusual because in Linux or Unix you'd create a directory and you mount on top of a directory with a device, but in, in Chromex it's a file. Okay, the EQ directory is where programming equates are stored. The ETC directory is where some of the startup files are, are um, kept. I'll show you that in a second. The gen directory is where you can generate, use a program to generate a new version of Chromex. <coughs> OBIN is my old bin directory because I did something clever. I'll show you that in a second. Temp directory is when I created. It's not Chrome Extended. I put I put temp files in there. The USR directory is storing user data. Um, we'll get, again, we're going to have a look at all these directories. So let's look at the bin directory first. You'll see it's actually mounted. It's actually a separate uh, disk that I've mounted on boot. Now that's very unusual. Normally the whole operating system is stored on a single drive or a single hard drive and it's only because it wouldn't fit that I've been able to do something clever which is as the Karenko system starts up I'm actually mounting the bin directory onto the file called slash bin and then the boot luckily continues. So let's look in slash bin. So D into slash bin. Let's have a little look. So you can see there's a whole host of programs. M many of these are my add-ons. Uh, you see it's paused because the, the device driver has knows how long the screen is. If I press the space key, or not, press the return key. Oh, that's unusual. Actually, I think that's, have we hung the system? No, I don't think so. These demos never work very well, do they? Let's press control C. Oh, okay, let's do a mode minus PA, mode minus pause. Let's do an LS again. Yeah, okay. It was something to do with the pause. I'm not going to debug that though. But if we do a mode command, it's like the STT command in, in, uh, in Linux or Unix. You can see that's the definition of this terminal. Uh, and it's mode minus pause, means pause is turned off. Um, where's the lines? You see it says length 24, so it knows that every 24 lines it will pause and wait for you to press the space bar. That's how it should work. Um, right, so look at some of these programs here. You'll see we've got actually things which are you won't see it, but this is a directory. So I've created a directory called Fortran, and inside Fortran is a list of Fortran programs. I've created a directory called SBasic and inside SBasic are 
programs other than the structured basic.com program you can see there. Um, I've created a directory called CPM 2.2 and inside of that are my programs relating to CPM. Um, so the bin directory is where binaries are kept. Uh, there's, of course, there's a help is inbuilt onto the system, so I can type H space any command. So let's do let's do an ls again, and let's do a help of hmm. let's do a help of the ls command. So H space ls. There you are, there's some of the options you can have with the ls command, minus a for all, minus s for summary. Uh, in, the, in the help uh, command you can press h to get an, an example of what other commands you can use. There's begin, help, quit, return, up. So let's just go down a few pages. Uh, it says identical to Elbin, so it says please look at Elbin. So I'll quit out of that with a Q command and then do a H of L. It's incredibly slow at the moment. If we look at the, the megahertz rating here, we're at 45. It's, it's, it's very slow emulation. I mean, this is often a case when the CPU is for some reason busy under this, under this emulation. Uh, so you can see we have uh, some some promises we can type in. And again, if I type H here, you can see we can do up. So if we do up, we'll go back a page, for example. We'll go back another page. So using the H command, you can get help to any command. Um, we're talking about the different directories. So let's go back up to the root directory, ls minus L, or slash. Uh, the next directory we'll have a look at is the CMD directory. So we'll do into CMD. And I'll just point out some of the. Um, sorry, this is the script directory, which has got uh, commands that uh, Kavenko ships with its own systems. Uh, then we're going to go to the etc directory, which is more interesting. And. It's a whole load of programs here, um, too much to go into in an introduction. Uh, let's just say there's a startup.cmd command, let's have a look at that. So ty is the equivalent of cat, so let's type startup.cmd. So I, I wrote this. Uh, so you can see that as the system starts, I've got a, the date, this was on the 4th of, of June here, we're going to mount the FDB floppy disk onto the bin file to create the bin directory. We're going to do a few other mounts here um, and then we're going to set the time. We're going to make sure that the console doesn't pause every 24 lines and it expands tabs. We're going to run a flush program every 30 seconds to flush buffers out to the hard drives or the floppy disks in this case. And then we're just going to print out some mount information and free space information. Okay, so let's continue the explanation of what's available. So ls minus l of this directory, of the etc directory. Um, there are some other programs here which are important. Uh, for example, there are these boot programs. Now, the, the beginning of the disk has to be written to with a valid boot program. So this is the boot program from the small floppy disk. This is the ls of star boot star okay, that's one of those, that's star boot star so those are the um, three big programs you can see that's for the floppy disk the eight inch floppy disk that's for the hard drive uh, and that's for the small floppy drive so you'd normally use the w boot command to write that special program to the beginning of the media so that when the computer starts up it will read that program and then continue on the boot process um, so at the moment we've got a system that's running. Let's reboot the system. Uh, oh, 
We're in the middle of this chess programme here, just to show you that there are some rudimentary graphics. Uh, there's a white and black chess programme. I, I, I am uh, the black here. Uh, for hit, uh, the screen's been slightly overwritten by an error message. Uh, let's just see. Uh, I think it's my turn to go. Is it still, if I can I do something like A8 to A5? Can I do that? A8 to A5. It's not very good, isn't it? I think that program is, is, is a bit dead. Let's look at the processes that are running. PS minus EL. You can see there is a chess program running. I can kill that process. So let me do a kill of 49. PS minus EL. Whoops. PS minus EL. That's, that's done. Now, this terminal should now be free. Oh, it is. You can see that that, that process is released. So, uh, who's logged on? Still the three of us. We're going to go to the root directory. We're going to do a boot of slash chromix. Let's start the boot process from scratch. So, it's read at the beginning of the drive and it wants to boot a floppy of the hard drive. There's only floppies available under this uh, emulation. So we choose floppy one. Which floppy do we want to boot? Well, we're going to boot from the, the, the drive A, which is FDA, so that's zero. Booted. Uh, not a Chromix disk was it trying to mount the D drive. The D drive is set to be a a random drive, which is the subject of another video. It's a way to transfer information in and out. Had it been set to drive D.DSK, that, that mount would have worked, and then it wouldn't have given me this error message. So let's set the time. Now, this system was never designed to, to go past 1999, so we have to use a little bit of a trick. So we've got the 6th of June, today's, uh, sorry, the 9th of June, so it's 6 slash 9, slash 121 for the, two, the year 2021, and that will actually set the year to past 1999. Okay, the time today right now is 21.24, and that's set things up correctly. Okay, that free command didn't work. You can see that's just a load of rubbish. That, that is obviously completely below me. So now we've booted up. This this is probably left from the previous uh, boot session, so I think it's, it's probably not, oh, yeah, so it's still at the login. So I'll be logging as system, there's no password on this particular case. Of course there is actually a password file, ls minus l of etc password. And if I type that password file out, just like uh, Linux or Unix, it's perfectly readable. And you'll see that the user system, well, none of these users have an encrypted password. I uh, oh, the user Marcus, in fact, has a password here, but the user's bin, user, user1, user2, system, do not have passwords. Okay. So, where were we? We're looking at what files and file systems exist on, on a standard Chromic system, ls minus l of, of root. We've rebooted the system. Who's logged on? Just the two of us. Okay. So we've got up to the etc directory. Let's go into the gen directory. We're nearly, we're nearly there. Oh, that didn't work. What happened there? Enter, enter. Oh, D, not CD. It's D into the gen directory. And you'll see there's a, the number of files here. So you'll see there's a, um, a crowgen command and then a number of files that I've created with uh, rather long-winded dates here so that I can try and figure out what's going on. Uh, we can just run Crowgen. Let's just run Crowgen. Let's do a help of Crowgen first. And remind myself I'm doing Crowgen space a path name. Um, and we can even have some user defined character device drivers. One of the problems uh, with the fact that uh, Chromoco no longer exists is that there's very sparse documentation. The sources have never been published. Uh, there were some ways to add on character device drivers, so that's things like uh, consoles, but not for terminals, sorry, but not for block device drivers, which are things like uh, hard drives 
or floppy drives. So it's difficult. Um, we're not going to add any character device drivers. What we'd of course like to do with Chrome is to add on our own block drivers and that would give us the facility to have, for example, emulate a hard drive. But uh, that's not going to happen. It's just the company shut down and the source code is lost. So let's do a Crogen anyway and let's put uh, Crogen Fred, something like that. So let's quit out of that. So Crogen Fred, let's see if that works. Right, so it's going to say, do I want a console chewer? Of course, I would like one of those. Do I want an octart or a qdart? So that's a separate card, which can have up to eight. The octart can have up to eight serial ports on it, and it contains its own Z80 processor with memory. So in the latter days of Kromenko, they, they produced a lot of, of these boards, S100 boards, with... CPUs and memory on them to expand the capabilities of the system. And these these cars worked initially on the Z80 systems, Z80 CPU systems, and then of course on the more powerful 68000 systems. So we'll say yeah. Uh, oh, let's say yes for that, shall we? Uh, do we want a parallel printer? Or oh, I don't want a parallel printer. Do we want a typewriter printer? That's a, a daisy wheel printer. I'll have one of those. Uh, on a serial printer, no thanks. IO processor memory, so it's possible to have a, a satellite processor card and that could actually run um, programs on behalf of a user. So at the moment we've only got one Z80, which is the CP, which is running the whole operating system. But if you wanted to make the system faster, you've got a multiple user or one user who's doing a lot of things, um, instead of time sharing that single processor across multiple banks of memory, multiple 64k banks of memory, you can add in one or more IO processor cards and then the system, when it gets a request to run the say a second Z80 program, can delegate that Z80 program to that IO processor. So I'll say yes for that, for example. Uh, so we'll just continue the defaults. This is just to show the SDI's graphics, tape driver, network, never seen any cards ever to do with network. Let's just try to add one in anyway, can't use it. Uh, block device drivers went floppy, yes. Hard drive, uh, no, because this emulator can't emulate a hard drive. SMD hard drive, a much bigger hard drive, no thank you. STD hard drive, so the STD hard drive is the infamous STDC MFM hard disk controller. So it's it's one of the best ever Comenco cards. It's a uh, a card with its own Z80 processor, 64k of memory, and it it does track read and write commands to an MFM format hard drive. So the tr the idea was the 10k tracks are buffered within the 64k RAM memory of the local card, and then. It's, supposed, it's, it, it's reckoned to speed up the uh, operation of your whole system. So we'll say yes to that. Again, we can't use this because the emulator that we're running here, the Zemu emulator, doesn't support uh, anything but a Chuart I.O. card, which is how we're managing to support three terminals. Uh, maximum divisions for drive zero, let's say five, for example. Okay, five again default root device. So default root device is the fact that uh, when we booted this system we, we chose uh, device 1 for the floppy and then we chose device 0 for, this, for the sub device to boot to floppy A. You can, instead of having that menu pop up each time, you can, if you're always going to boot say to floppy A, you can always, you can hard code that one zero in here. So we'll say default root device uh, no. What's my login? So you can log in with a particular username. No. Default for files. It's going to create that file. Now we can't boot fred.sys because I've just answered a load of random questions and some of them wouldn't be appropriate. Forgot to look at show you the dev directory. Go into the dev directory and remember I was talking about device names and numbers. That's ls minus l of fd star and you'll see this is where we booted to major device 1, minor device 0 and you can see that's the definition 
of the floppy disk A. You'll notice that some of the permissions have gone a bit wonk. Um, I can change that. So, uh, at the risk of it, all of this going wrong, let's ditch, use the ac access command. Have I got that command right? Yeah, A, double C, S, 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 command. We're going to change it to read, write, append, dot nothing, dot nothing, and we're going to do that for FD start. <coughs> And that was not the right way to do that. Ah, no space. Read, write, read, execute, write, append. Nothing, nothing of FD star. Thank you very much. LS of minus L of FD star. And we've got, so I've got rid of those permissions uh, for the group and for the other. So this is the permissions for the user, this is permissions for the group, this is permissions for everybody else in the world. Um, so as you can see in this directory, there are a lot more. There are a lot of other devices, and um, these STD devices relate to the hard drive, which we can't emulate on this emulator. The TTYs relate to terminals, and uh, other things relate to things that this 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 is, again is wrong. But there's, there's no such thing as a uniform disk on uh, on Chrome. It's eleven dot two I put one in there somehow. IOMM would be the IO uh, processor. Okay, so I think we're nearly done. Let's go to the USR directory, have a look in there. Right, that's one as well. In here, we've got uh, we've got a mail directory, so you can send mail between users. Obviously, this is a pre-internet system, so the internet wasn't invented here. So, don't get any ideas you're going to send any mail out to the internet. Help contains all the help files, so let's go into the help directory. And you can write your own help files, and I've done so. So for commands that I've written and compiled, typically in C, I've put my um, help files in here. Oh, there's a CDOS copy uh, program which allows you to list files on a CDOS or CPM disk. That's quite useful because we can use that to transfer data into this emulated system. Again, that's in another video. Um, I think there's a query. There's a query command. The query command will search through a set of files uh, in order for you to help put, establish a program that does what you want it to do. So if I do something like query find, it has a little look and it says, "Oh, where does the word find come in different things?" There's a there's a find command and there's a match command. Uh, if I say query, query copy, I'll search for all instances of copying. So, okay, there's two programs, it's fine. One's called CDOS copy, which allows you to copy files to and from a CDOS disk. And one is called the copy program, which copies a file. Okay, I think we're basically done. LS minus L of slash, let's see if we've covered everything. I think we've covered everything. Um, in the bin directory, I think we've got uh, uh, structured basic and we could run a structured basic program. As you saw in the middle of that, there was a chess program running here with rudimentary uh, graphics, nothing special. So that, can, that uh, completes my tour of Chromix 11.27. To remind you, it's running under a VMware, 32-bit VMware Windows 10 session, inside which is running the Xemu emulator. The Xemu emulator emulates a Z80 processor with 64K memory standard, but many banks of that memory, and those many banks are used by Kromenko Chromix to provide a multi-user, multitasking, Unix-like operating system running on a Z80 processor. Okay, thanks for watching, Dari. It's just time to suspend this system, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.